Whew, uh, I'm sorry for the delay, everyone. Uh, we are collecting ourselves. Uh, sorry for any formatting issues. I'm writing this on my phone. So, uh, Faye's dad picked us up in his truck. Uh, he brought his buddy with him, uh, who's now following us in my car. A lot of things happened last night. Uh, some things uh, I won't share because I'm not sure how to interpret them yet. I'm, I'm not even sure I understand what happened, but... But here are the most important things. I also managed to get some recordings, which I'll try to upload when we get home to California in a few days. I tried to stay awake last night until 1am, because over the past few nights, this is the approximate time that the noise has changed from uh, rustling and branches cracking to voices. I'd make it. I fell asleep on the couch with my laptop open, waiting for the Wi-Fi to come back. Uh, I think it was... About 12.30. I woke up right around 1.15am to a muffled voice. In my sleepy days, I, I struggled to figure out where it was coming from. Thought it was just outside the living room window. So I sat there quietly trying to make the words out. It was a woman's voice. It said things like, A few days. It's not mine. I'm not alone. Okay. So I got up, peeked out the curtains, I didn't see anyone. But then the voice said, it's my parents' house. And I knew the voice was Faye's. And as I mentioned earlier, my fiancé has an undiagnosed sleep disorder and has extensive sleep talk, and sometimes, sometimes she sleepwalks. She has had uh, pronounced night terrors since she was a little kid. I'll post a story on that someday. I walked into the bedroom to find Faye, sleeping on her tummy as usual. She didn't say anything else as I came in. Two things really disturbed me about this situation, though. The first is that she appeared to be having a conversation with someone, which is actually quite common for her, but, but the person she was conversing with was interrogating her, asking her questions about herself, me, the cabin, etc. Second, in her sleep, Faye was imitating another voice. It wasn't hers that she was speaking with, and she was altering the pitch and tone to sound like a different person. My modus operandi is not to wake her up when she has sleep disturbances. There's, there's a story behind this. Expect one someday. Instead, I, I gently rub her back and hair, which calms her, and puts her back to restful sleep. I did this for a few minutes. But then there was another noise, off in the distance outside. I got up and walked to the window to listen. And I think this was the first time that I really felt scared enough that I felt like we were in, in real danger. It was a child, singing in the dark. I couldn't really make out what you, much of uh, what they were saying, but, but I am certain that it was a child, that probably age six or eight, trying to sing a song. The snow had abated for a while now, and the stars were notably bright, so I could see all the way to the rim of the forest, about 20 yards out. There was a figure standing there, just past the trees, back facing me, looking up at either the moon or the tops of the trees. It stood so still that I convinced myself it was a tree stump or something. And in a few minutes, it was no longer visible. My skeptical nature compels me to be reasonable and say my eyes were playing tricks on me. When I turned around, Faye was sitting straight up in bed, eyes closed. She does this a lot in her sleep. She craned her neck and said something like, Don't let them in. Don't let them inside. She was still doing that weird voice, so I woke her up. Faye and I sat in the bedroom with the lights on, talking about what we should do. I tried to get online to send an email to her parents, but of course, why would it work when you need it? <laughs> we agreed to stay in the same room and try to fall back asleep. At one point, I got up to get her some water. She hadn't vomited in several hours now and was feeling a lot better. 
Out the kitchen window, I saw flashes of pale light. And they weren't like flashes you'd see when someone walks through the woods with a flashlight. They were more like... Like if someone had a lantern, they could they could slowly turn on and off. I flicked on the porch lights to the front and side of the house, hoping that it would discourage anyone from trying to approach. But as I walked to the bedroom, I saw the distinct outline of a person through the window curtain in the living room. They were pressed against the glass with their hands on it, trying to peer inside. Since it was dark in the living room and bright outside, I could clearly see their silhouette. I shouted and approached the window, but the person ran off before I pulled the curtain open. Faye slept soundly, but I continued to hear voices outside, different ones. On and off, all night until dawn. I wrote several of them down. I couldn't sleep, so I camped out in the living room. I kept the bedroom door open so I could hear Faye if she started talking again. The voices would go away for hours and then start back up again. At one point, I fell asleep because I was awoken by the sound of a light switch flicking on and off. From the couch, I could see light from outside going on and off in patterns of five. I can't explain why this disturbed me so much, but it did. It did, and I imagined some kind of horrible creature standing in my house somewhere, flipping the switch up and down and smiling. And my first instinct was to check on Faye, and I, I nearly had a heart attack when I saw that she wasn't in bed. I, I started calling her name and, and pacing around the house, looking out the windows to see if she was outside, and when I looked out the kitchen window, there she was, sitting on the hood of my car about 30 feet out in the driveway. Her back was to me, and she was staring off into the forest. She was absolutely rigid, just the way she sits up in bed when she's asleep. Faye asleep walked all over the house back home in California. I, I found her in the kitchen and the downstairs hallway and the living room, but she's never gone outside. I shouted her name from the kitchen, but the second I did, Faye jumped off my car and dashed into the woods at full sprint. She never looked back at me. I started flipping out and screaming her name over and over. I, I scrambled to grab my boots to go after her, but the second I pulled the front door open, Faye called out my name from behind. She was standing in the hall, looking confused, asking me what was wrong. Apparently, she had been in the bathroom. In my masculine crusade, I'd forgotten to check there. I looked out at my car and into the forest, and honestly, honestly, the first thought that came into my mind was, you clever motherfucker. Needless to say, we stayed up the remaining few hours until dawn, intermittently writing down the voices we heard, which, which faded away, became less frequent with the passage of time. I'll try to get the recordings up in a few days. For now, Here's a list of the voices we heard. Uh, we recalled some of the voices from the previous nights from memory, uh, but I, I just figured you'd like to know what was being said throughout the duration of this... this lovely cabin experience. Hello? Oh, oh God. God. Look at it! Look! Hello? Don't! Don't! They see in the dark. I'm lost. I'm lost. It's very dark. I see those lights. I'll come down there! Don't, Don't smile. smile. Don't, Don't smile. I see you. <gasps> Lay it on the ground. And burn it. 
She talks in her sleep. She's talking to me now. When do we go inside? When do we go inside? <laughs> Stop! Look at the window. Did you see it? Help me! <laughs> Uh, help me! There's bodies still in the ground there. Never found them. <laughs> but they're there. Right here. Right here. <laughs> they found it. They found it. Standing in the same place! Twenty years! I will return to Colorado, but fuck Pikes Peak. <laughs> By the way, I, I forgot to check uh, to see if that Dreamcatcher was still out there in the back. <laughs> You're welcome to drive out there and look for yourself, though. <laughs>